Okay, so we've actually been using natural logarithms quite a bit in my videos so far, but they in the textbook have separated the use of natural logarithms to a separate exercise, which isn't bad, it just means we get some more practice of using them. So we've talked about this lots already, but the inverse of the exponential function y equals e to the power of x, where e is Euler's number, is y equals ln x, where ln is the natural logarithm. So there's a couple of rules that we'd like to look at here, and you should know these, but we're saying here ln of e to the power of x. Think, what should ln of e to the power of x be? Well, there's so many different ways of thinking about this. You could either say to yourself, what is the power of e that gives me e to the power of x? It's obviously going to be x. Or you could think to yourself with some of those other rules, you could pull that power down. So you get x ln e. And ln e is saying, what is the power of e that gives me e, which is just 1. So it's x multiplied by 1. Or you could just think to yourself that this ln and this e are kind of cancelling out because they're kind of the opposite of each other. Either way, ln of e to the power of x is just going to be equal to x. And then we've got this other one here. We've got e to the power of ln x. So we're now saying this is e to the power of the power of e that gives you x. Well, obviously, this is also going to be x. This e and this ln, just like here, are effectively cancelling each other out. So we just get that e to the power of ln x is just going to be equal to x. And similarly, if it was e to the power of ln of x plus 3 minus whatever, minus x squared, that's just going to be equal to x plus 3 minus x squared. That e and that ln are effectively cancelling each other out. OK? So we're going to solve some of these equations that we've got here, and they're going to be pretty similar to some of the other ones that we've done. So I'm going to take logarithms of both sides, or I can do it as rewriting it as a log statement. So I could say to myself, I'm going to take um, ln of both sides. Let's go back to my purple for this. So if I do ln of e to the x equals ln 5, the ln and the e cancel, so you just get x equals ln 5. The reason this works is because what this statement actually means is we're saying, the power of e that gives you 5 is x. Remember, it's like saying the power of base e that gives me 5 is x. Or you can just see it as taking ln of both sides and the ln and the e cancelling each other out. So this one, we're just going to solve. Um, we're going to make ln x the subject, first of all. And then we're going to turn it back into an exponential. So I'm not going to put this as a decimal form, by the way. I'm going to leave this in exact form. But if you wanted to, you could put it as a decimal. And I'll show you. If you do e to the power of the answer, which is ln 5, obviously you get 5. That e and that ln are cancelling out. So we've got 2 ln x plus 1 equals 5. So 2 ln x equals 4. So ln x equals 2. And then think about what this means. You can either do both sides to the power of e. So you could do e to the ln x equals e squared. And that e and that ln cancel. So you've just got x equals e squared. Or you could just say to yourself, this is saying the power of e that gives you x is 2. In other words, the power of e that gives you x is 2. Either way, we end up at this answer, which is e squared. e squared is just a number, but we're going to leave it in its exact form of e squared, because they like to use, they like you to start writing things in exact form as well, okay? So let's try this one. We can either write this using our knowledge of what this, this statement actually means. So we're saying here, it is the power of e that gives me 3x plus 1 is 2. Or we can think about taking uh, raising both sides to the power of e. So it's e to the ln of 3x plus 1 equals e squared. That e and that ln cancel, and you end up with the same thing. Personally, I prefer that first bit of really understanding the log statement. So I'm going to subtract 1. And then I'm going to divide by 3. And again, this is my answer in exact form. No decimals there at all. If you wanted to find it out as a decimal, then you could. 
So I'm going to do e squared, whoops, e squared minus 1 divided by 3. So it's 2.129 or 2.13 when it's rounded. And I'll show you that it works. If I do the ln of 3, the answer plus 1, I get the answer 2. So you can always check these things on your calculator. OK, so this one is asking us to give our answer as an exact value. And again, we're going to do the method I did earlier on. We're just going to take natural logarithms of this. You could take log of base 2. You could take log of base e. You could take log of base 10. But I like taking log of base ln here, of, of base e, ln. So I'm going to do ln of 2 to the power of x, e to the power of x plus 1, equals ln 3. You see, I took logs of the whole side. I can now split this using my log laws. And I can pull that power down. So I get x ln 2. And here, the ln and the e are effectively cancelling each other out. So you just get left with that x plus 1. Or you could think about this as pulling the power down so that you pull the power down to get x plus 1 and you get ln e. And we know that ln e is just 1. ln e is 1. So we have x ln 2 plus x plus 1, because ln e is 1, equals ln 3. So I'm going to move the 1 to the other side and I'm going to factorise the x. So can you see what I did there? I factorised x out of this, so I got x brackets ln2 and x times 1 to get x, and I put this plus 1 here to the other side as minus 1. So my exact answer is going to be ln3 minus 1 over ln2 plus 1, and it wanted my answer as an exact value. Again, I'm going to show you that you can check this on your calculators. You can put it back into the equation and see if it works. So I'll type in ln3 minus 1, and I'm going to type in ln2 plus 1. Keep that stored in my calculator. And I'm going to do 2 to the power of the answer multiplied by e to the power of the answer plus 1. And we get the answer 3. Now, when it says exact value, we normally do ln. We normally use ln here, but you could take any log. The answer just might look a bit different. It might look different, but it's still going to be the same number. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. We're going to do the same theme as what we did before. We're now going to have a look at some equations where you can't take logarithms of the whole side. And the reason you can't take logarithms are because of these pesky extra constants. You can't take logarithms of the whole thing because of these constants that we've got here. And all of these are going to be some types of quadratics. So in this first one, I'm going to let y equal e to the power of x. Then we know that y squared would be e to the power of 2x. So we have y squared plus 2y minus 15 equals 0. And I'm lazy, so I'm going to use the polynomial solver on my calculator. 1, 2, and minus 15. So either y is equal to 3 or y is equal to minus 5. So e to the power of x equals 3 or e to the power of x is equal minus 5. Well, the negative one is going to have no solutions because we know that the e graph is always above 0. So this one has no solutions. And so if I take ln of both sides, x is going to be ln 3. And I'm going to leave that in exact form. OK, let's try this next one that we've got here. Again, we're going to use these same inputs that we've got. OK, so I'm not going to repeat these. I'm just going to do these bits in green, and I'm going to use them again. So it's going to be y squared plus 5y. And I'm going to subtract that 6 so it equals 0. Back to my calculator, 1, 5, and minus 6. And my calculator tells me that either y is equal to 1 or y is equal to minus 6. Replacing y with what it originally was, e to the x equals 1, or e to the x equals minus 6. Well, e to the x is always greater than 0. We said this just over here where there's no solutions. So we know that e to the x is always greater than 0, hence no solutions for that one. 
And here you could say that x is just going to be ln1, and we know that ln1 is 0. It kind of makes sense. We're saying e to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So the answer that we've got for this one is just 0. Final one that we've got here, this one's a little bit tricky, actually, because it doesn't look like a quadratic. If I said that y was equal to e to the power of x, we've now got to deal with this e to the power of minus x. So I'm going to do it using y notation, and then I'm going to do it using e notation and see which one you prefer. So here, if y is e to the power of x, I need to think, what would e to the power of minus x be? What would e to the power of minus x be? Think to yourself, what does it mean when the power has got a negative? Well, it means reciprocal. It means it would be 1 over y. So I could now replace this. It's not going to look like a quadratic immediately, but I would have y minus 2 multiplied by 1 over y equals 1. In other words, 1 minus 2 over y equals 1. So to do something here, I don't like the fact that there's this divide by y. And to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply everything by y. So I get y squared minus 2 equals y. In other words, y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. So we've got that quadratic. OK, I'm going to just show you the other method, first of all, which is doing it in a slightly different way. My other method is to take the equation and instead of replacing it with y, I'm going to multiply everything by e to the power of x. The reason I'm going to do this is to get rid of to get rid of the negative power for e for this bit that I've got here. So if I multiply them all to the power of x, I would have e to the power of 2x, you kind of add 1 to the power. I would have then have 2 e to the power of 0, which is just 2. And then I would have e to the power of x. So I then get e to the power of 2x minus e to the power of x minus 2. And then you can see this is actually going to be exactly the same as this thing I've got here, because this is my y squared, this is my y, and this is my 2. So we do end up with the same, uh, the same quadratic. So I'm going to do my quadratic with 1, minus 1, and minus 2. And so we get that y is equal to 2, or y is equal to minus 1. So this is going to be that e to the x equals 2. In other words, x equals ln 2. Or e to the x equals minus 1. But this is going to have no solutions. OK? Um, you do not have to do all of the stuff with y. If you can spot a way of it factorizing straight away, for example, with this one, if you could just go straight in your head and say this is going to be uh, e to the x plus 5 brackets e to the x minus 3 equals 0. If you can spot that that factorizes to that, you're very welcome to go straight to the factorizing. The reason I've done all of this with y is it usually helps people to spot that these are actually types of quadratics. Um, but if you can't spot that, they, if you can spot that they're quadratics, you're welcome to go straight into the factorizing and the solving straight away without having to put it in this kind of form. Um, OK, so now you can try some of the questions from exercise 14G.